Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is a Monday morning, the 19th of February, and another edition of Driving the Line, your sports betting brand of record. The coach is on the road. He's doing the golf. Everybody knows he's your top guy for calling all the golf action. So I am Jonathan Zaslow. You guys and the crew, you should know me by now as I've been appearing with the guys on Monday mornings the last few weeks. Glad to have you here with us to start the week. We got a lot going on. We're coming off a weekend with all the NBA All-Star festivities. And of course, we got a lot of action to recap. And that includes college baseball week one. I mean, are you kidding me? Look at the plays from Friday. Our man AB, 4-0 and with the college baseball plays on Friday. Saturday rolls around. You got to, nobody's perfect. So you got to mix in a couple else. But still, not even a losing day, two and two. And then Sunday rolls around. Let's go perfect again. I mean, opening week of college baseball, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, nine and two. If you have been hanging out here on Driving the Line, checking out your college baseball picks, you started out on fire opening week of college baseball. All right. So that's what we've had the last few days. There's a lot of action, though, to get to as far as today goes. Let's bring in our pal AB and start the show. Come on. AB, what's going on, man? Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Zaz, my man. You're doing great. And you know what? I thought that seeing Tiger leave the tournament, I thought that Mick Coach was going to step in, start firing off three irons out there in the fairway. But no, I didn't see it. But man, great. Like you said, great start to the college baseball season. Got so much more to go, and everybody's going to meet somebody today that also gets down, former player at LaSalle in college baseball. I think you guys are really going to like him. Man, it's going to be a fun, fun season. A.B., let's be honest. Look, you could give yourself a little pat on the back here on a Monday morning. How good does that feel that the very first week of college baseball action, which, by the way, isn't exactly like a marquee sport to bet, the very first week of college baseball, you come out swinging with that kind of weekend. Come on, A.B., give yourself a pat on the back. We'll give ourselves a little bit, you know what? But I, I love it, man. It's a fantastic sport. Um, you know, if you plug in and do the work, you can really find some nice, you know, market inefficiencies out there. And, and I know that, you know, for anybody who's brand new and you look at your books, and first off, understand every book is different too. Like, I know they're tough to find across the board, right? Like, I had to scour DraftKings all weekend um, to find them. But don't get discouraged. Like, when you see, like, money lines that are minus 600 and all these big numbers, like, don't let it intimidate you, man. We played some good numbers, played some parlays, put it together. It was fun. Now, of course, that was the last few days. We got to start focusing on how to get those winning plays today. So let's get to our crew play of the day. We all know, we all get together here. We're going to figure out in the chat how to get that money tonight, A.B., what are the options today? Yep. So it's a small board, obviously, uh, uh, across the uh, sports betting landscape here. No NBA. Um, so we're just going to focus on two games here. All right. Virginia versus Virginia Tech. You got Virginia plus three and a half. Virginia Tech minus three and a half. Uh, Iowa State and Houston. Iowa State plus nine and a half. Houston minus nine and a half. So the options, the poll is in the chat now. Put your votes in and we will update that and the winner at the end of the show. Now, we love hearing from the crew. You could always hit us up in the comments section. You get involved in the show. And, of course, we'll come up with a crew play of the day, which we will update you guys at the end of the show. Before we keep it moving here, A.B., there's so much going on here with Driving the Line. Why don't you tell everybody how the crew can get involved with all the extra stuff that we got going on here at Driving the yeah. Line. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, you know, we always say that, you know, when you want more, we're going to deliver more on this brand. And that's exactly what being a premium member is all about. So you take a look right here on the screen. We show we've got your own betting show, Shoot Your Shot, which will be live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern to where me and Coach take a step back. We're in the audience. You are running the show and we produce it and everything for you. Not only that, but going to help you if you have a brand sports betting that you want to get launched up. We're going to put you right on the front page. We're going to boost you out. All that stuff will get you started. The daily exclusive every single weekday, we drop extra picks, conversation, everything 
for more of what you would want. And then Coach's Corner special guest interviews and shows and so much more. So you can click the join button right there at the bottom of the screen or the link is in the show description. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask anybody in the chat or me directly. Got you. It's a ton of fun. And tonight, everybody, shoot your shot 9 p.m. Eastern. You saw the first one. This one is going to be exciting. Yeah, so tonight, shoot your shot. And you heard A.B. there. You got questions. He's not going to big time you. You see right there the Twitter handle, at Alan G. Bell. You can hit up A.B. on the Twitter machine. He's going to get right back at you and tell you all the ways that you could be part of the crew here. Now, speaking of which, we got a lot going on today. We got some great folks who are going to be on board with us today and help get us the winning plays here on Driving the Line on a Monday on President's Day. It doesn't matter that it's a President's Day. We're all here because the action doesn't stop. It's time for us to bet the board. Now, of course, however you're watching us today on Driving the Line, you got to hit that subscribe button. If it's on the YouTube, you got to then click on the bell so you get all the notifications. You want to make sure that you're always seeing everything we got going on here on Driving the Line. And I mean, look at these beauties we just brought up on the screen here. I mean, first up, our pal, the silent assassin, Jacob Pick Management. Jacob, hello. How are you doing this morning? What's up, Saz? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited to be here, uh, as always. So. And we got a new face as well. Welcome aboard, A.B. How about James Santor? We we find Look, no offense to the three of us here, but we finally got an athlete on the show here with us. I mean, come on. James Santor, former ball player at LaSalle. Also, CMO Bet Rhythm, Juice Reel. James, tell us what you got going on at Bet Rhythm and Juice Reel. Go ahead. What's up, fellas? Great to, uh, great to be here with you guys. Um, right. Yeah, so... Basically, what we're trying to do with Rhythm and Juice Reel is help bettors make better betting decisions, make data very accessible. And the best part is you can download both for free. So um, I'll give out some picks later from both apps, but finding the best odds, uh, inefficient lines, and value for all the picks we're going to be giving out. And we're also betting college baseball this year. Uh, my best friend just started a, a big Twitter account called College Base Locks, and we had a pretty successful first weekend. So can't wait to talk about that with you guys, too. Well, was it as successful what we just saw AB put in front no. of us all? No, I mean, I don't know. You're like uh, Nostradamus over there with college baseball, apparently. So, I mean, you could be making a lot of people a lot of money this year if you're doing having weekends like that. Well, let's hopefully we're going to keep that thing going here tonight. So let's get to betting the board. Come on now. Let's see what we got. All right. So, A.B., why don't you get us started here? Tell us what the play is tonight. Obviously, the light board. We don't have the NBA. They're on the All-Star break. They got to rest. We know the NBA players. They love resting. So you had the All-Star break yesterday. No NBA for a few days here. What do you got tonight? Yep, we're going to go with Iowa State Houston over 127 and a half. And I'm going to tell you why. What we've seen in college basketball and, and you know, teams getting close to uh, conference tournament time and then obviously March Madness. You're seeing scoring in the second half go up in games because fouls are way up. And that's not that we're banking specifically on fouls, but we're using them to our advantage. So when we see a number that is at 127 and a half with a spread, nine and a half, I mean, kind of big. You don't ever want blowouts. Blowouts lead to unders. But this is a very attainable total. So we're going to roll with it here. Both teams need to get this win. It'd be a fun game. Give me the over 127 and a half. All right, so you heard A.B. right there. Iowa State, Houston over 127. Have gave you the good reasoning as well. Now, our man Howie Schwab, of course, always good thoughts out to Howie. He's not with us on the show today, but whatever he's doing, he's always got time to send in the picks. I mean, he cares about the crew. He cares about driving the line, and he cares about cashing in. So Howie's played tonight. He's sticking with the same game that A.B. just gave, gave you. It's Houston minus nine and a half at minus 105. So that's a good opportunity now for me to jump in with my plays for tonight because I got the opposite. I'm taking Iowa State this evening, and I just think for the number 10 team in the country, Iowa State, I know they're on the road. I know it's tough for these kids to play on the road. I know Houston's a great defensive team. That seems like a lot of points to me. So Howie and I are actually going head-to-head -head this evening, all right? Let the best man win. I got two others for you tonight. I also, if we're talking about defense, you know you're thinking about Virginia. 
So I got Virginia tonight, plus two and a half at minus 105 at Virginia Tech. Number 21st ranked team in the country, Virginia. It's obviously a rivalry game. I'll take the points in what's usually a low scoring affair and one of the best defensive teams in the country, Virginia. So I'll take the points there. And how about the Tampa Bay Lightning? I'll give you a little bit of puck line as well. The Lightning minus one and a half at plus 125. And here's the line of thinking there. The Florida Panthers, they went into Tampa over the weekend. Kick the crap out of the Lightning. I love it. You know I'm a huge Panther fan. So the Lightning, who had won 10 in a row at home, they're coming back. They're angry. They want to get back in the win column. And they're taking on a terrible Ottawa Senators team. So I like Lightning minus one and a half to get back on track here. Jacob, what do you got for us today? Come on. Uh, I am all over these Sabres here in regulation versus Anaheim. Uh, Anaheim setting Gibson in net, uh, who has lost seven out of his last 11, ranks in the towards the bottom in all goalie stats. But more importantly, uh, Lukanen is in net for Buffalo, and I think he is their uh, answer to their goalie problems. He is 8-5 and five his last 13 with three shutouts and just allowing 21 goals in his last 13 games. So I really love Buffalo at home here uh, to get it done in regulation. And I'm also all over the Oilers here, minus 1.5. Arizona coming off a tough game last night, but really they are just awful versus Edmonton. 1-6 on their last uh, on the road, their last 7 versus Edmonton. Uh, three and seven in the last 10 at home and 0 and nine straight up overall. Uh, and they are sending a goalie in that who is playing just his second professional game ever uh, in the NHL. And I think he is going to have all sorts of trouble taking on Connor McDavid and this Oilers team. Uh, so I am all over the Oilers here, minus one and a half. All right, there you go. So I gave you a hockey. Jacob gave you a couple NHL plays as well. He's all over it. Finally, our new pal, of course, is James Santor. Let's this is very big business now. Your first plays here on driving the line. James, let's hear it. What do you got for the crew? Come on. All right, fellas. So what I do is I use, again, data to do everything that I, I make my picks with. So I'm going to use two for Juice Reel and two from Rhythm. And I'm going to explain how I kind of derive them. So for the Lynn kid over five and a half rebounds, that's actually a pick from one of the best users on the Juice Reel app. So we have something called Community Locks that allows anybody to go find the most profitable betters over a certain period of time and then tail their picks anonymously. So that Lynn kid over five and a half rebounds, that is a juice reel pick from a community locks. Coolest part about that is it's a risk-free betting opportunity. If the pick loses, you get your money back on the juice reel app. So I'm very confident in this one. The user that made this pick is up $1,000 over the past week um, betting college basketball props. So I feel very confident in that one. Uh, crack and money line, same thing. It's also a community lock from juice reel. So this is one of the top bettors on the app betting hockey. Uh, so this was the number one better betting hockey, actually. So I unlocked that for the community here. So I feel very confident that, again, the top better in the app who's frequently betting and winning NHL picks has this pick right. So crack and money line minus 130. And then from Rhythm, Rhythm lets you create custom betting models. So we have AI models. You can create your own ones. But then what it does is it gives you the best lines and the best bets across all of the different games. So college basketball, NBA, we had college football, NFL. Um, so what I do on a daily basis is I go and check what my model recommends. And these are the best games across all of rhythm. So this is all backed by data, three plus years worth of models. Um, and I love betting these kind of random games that are like, again, in, in random conferences like the SWAC or the MEAC, because there's a ton of value. The lines are always a little bit inefficient and rhythm kind of pinpoints those for me. So South Carolina State Howard under 150 and a half, minus 108. And Texas A&M Commerce, Incarnate Word, over 141 and a half. Now we had some people go, we have somebody go 17 and seven this week on college basketball bets and another guy go 25 and seven uh, throughout this weekend. So a ton of winners going on uh, with rhythm and juice drill right now. So hopefully these are all uh, some winners for you guys. Too. AB, how about that? I feel like we're throwing up some plays there. Excellent job by James. I feel like we're throwing up some plays there that you're only getting when you're watching driving the line. Absolutely, man. And look, that like first off, like the two companies that he's talking about, check those out. Like they are absolutely legit. And number two, rhythm and juice. That is a hell. Like I love that name. That's a hell of a name right there. Like I think that that might find its way onto a merch T-shirt, uh, <laughs> which of course James obviously will get his kick on it. So there we yep. go. Excellent it. job. So there you go. The crew has a bunch of plays to follow for tonight's action. And yeah, there you go. Let's get it done. So 
we'll we'll we'll, we'll say uh, uh, we'll bid adieu to Jacob here for the time being. We'll keep James on board here, and let's get to today's rundown. Want to make sure everybody, of course, you hit the like button, you subscribe, you you rate, you like, you comment. That's all good for the algorithm. I don't know how the algorithm works, but I know if you do all that stuff, it helps everybody get all the monies, and then everybody's really happy. So just do the good stuff that works for the algorithm. And of course, AB, I mean, Coach has been putting together this merchandise, these t-shirts, all the driving the line merch. We got you guys got some really cool stuff going on right now, right? With the merch. Oh, absolutely, man. I'll tell you what. So we've got a brand new item uh, that is featured this week. You see it right there on the left. And we get questions of how, you know, not only to buy, but look through the catalog, right? So you could do it two ways. Number one, you could scan that QR code right there. Or number two, you see in the show description, the URL is right there. Go check it out. It's on millions.co. It's fantastic, man. Uh, the guys have set this up really, really nicely. But yeah, man, you want to rep the crew, be a part of it? There you go right there. Awesome. Good merch. Awesome. Awesome. There you go. There you go. So this past weekend, let's get into some of the big stories. And and this was a it was a showcase weekend for the NBA. All-star weekend. I feel like it's NBA Christmas. So we had NBA Christmas this weekend. There was there was there was some things to like. There were some things to not like. So let's start out with All-Star Saturday night. And I don't know for UAB, but when I was growing up, when I'm a little kid, All-Star Saturday night was such a big deal. The three-point contest, the dunk contest, you couldn't get me to not be sitting at home in front of my television during All-Star Saturday night. It was such a huge deal. Give me some overall thoughts on Saturday night if you felt that it was enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Like, you know, it, it was very similar to, like, the home run derby, right? Like, I didn't really care about the MLB All-Star game as much or the NBA All-Star game as much, but I do like those. I like the skills challenge. Um... Yeah, man, look, first off, our man, dude, Dame time, he could shoot, right? I mean, he could get it down. And, and I have to give credit as well for everyone. I mean, not only Mac in the dunk contest, but everybody participating because there's only so many dunks that you could do. Yeah. And this thing has been going on for decades now, right? Like, it's tough to be creative in regards to it. And somebody like Mac who has bounced out of the gym, Man, it was cool, man. So I'm with you. Like, I, I enjoy Saturday, honestly, much more than Sunday. Yeah, I, I feel like, James, it's it's really hit or miss with the dunk contest because they make it the feature event of the night. It's on last, and it ends up being hit or miss. Every year we say, hey, what could we do to fix the dunk contest? There's nothing to fix. Every dunk has been done before. That's why you got these guys who bring in the props or they bring in uh, some YouTuber I never heard of before <laughs> to sit on a chair and Five jump over him, you, you know? <laughs> and then and, and then you have the judges. I don't know what they were watching. The judging was a little bit wacky on Saturday night. But uh, if you want to talk about a way to fix the dunk contest, got to find a way to get the stars back in. I mean, James, half the dunk contest field was G-leaguers. Literally half the field were in the G-league. Yeah, I mean, I used to that used to be the best event. Like I used to get to stay up late every single dunk contest every year. It was such a big deal. But you're right. I mean, to the, at this point, there's two things, in my opinion. One, every dunk's been done. Two, guys are so athletic. They're able to do a lot of these crazy dunks in game now. So it's not as mesmerizing when you see it happen in the dunk contest just because you see this crazy athleticism every night. Um, I, I said I saw something on Twitter and I'm curious everybody else's thoughts on this. They're like, if we have all these G Leaguers in now why don't we just start getting random people that are like jumping out of the, the gym on TikTok and Twitter and doing all that and have them be the ones that are doing this. You kind of have like a, you build it, you kind of have like an American idol type thing. And then you get to kind of showcase that at the dunk contest. I've got the answer. I've got the answer. What you do is you bring back the rock and jock with the 50 foot goal. All oh, right. Yes. That's what yes. you bring back, dude. Like that would be yeah. legit. So, yeah. James, you're onto something, bro. Yeah. 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 Just gotta make it fun again. It's still a spectacle. It's just again, it's it's almost commonplace now. It's like a guy, it's like a pitcher throwing a hundred. It just happens now. Yeah. How ex yeah. You, AB, you're totally right. How exciting was that every year when there was the MTV Rock and Jock game, and you get to what was it like two minutes left in the half, 
and they bring down the 25 point basket. And then because they had done that for a couple years, you remember what they ended up having after that? There was then the 50 point basket, which was above the 25 point basket. That was so much fun. Can you imagine if they did something like that? It, dude, it'd be awesome, man. Like, I want Steph Curry firing threes at the 50, like, constantly, man. It would be, dude, it would be awesome, man. That's half the highlights now is, again, like, Trey Young hitting shots from uh, in the stands. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's more, more so the, that's the social presence that they have because the game was so bad. Now, yeah. something that never lets us down is the three-point contest. That's always good. It's always going to be good because you never know what's going to happen. And it's always an incredible display of shooting ability every single year. So that's always great. But for me, guys, the thing I was looking forward to most was something new. And that was Sabrina Ionescu from the WNBA one-on-one -on -one three-point challenge against Steph Curry. To me, this was the this was the moment of the night. This is what I was looking for. And look, 29 points it took it took Steph Curry to beat Sabrina Inescu, who scored 26. She did an excellent job, AB. She held her own even though she didn't win. Oh, yeah, she definitely did. The announcer was crushing her, too. I did not understand that part yeah. at all. Um, but no, man, like, dude, that's a cool idea. And it almost felt like you had those two stars from their respective leagues, and it was almost like horse. Right. Like it, it almost kind of felt like that, which also would be cool. It would take way too long. You couldn't do that on, you know, televised broadcast. But like anything new, you know, that you could run with something like that. It it almost felt like um the match, you know, when like they first did that in golf. Like you you see it, you're like, oh, okay, this is different. Like, all right, I'll give this a shot. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was better than the than the game. I'll I'll give it that. Like it was much more fun than the game was. James, did you have a rooting interest? Because I'll tell you, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm betraying all the men out there. I was rooting for Sabrina Inescu. Look, I, I thought it was so cool. Again, it's competitive. Like, all people want to see is competition. And another thing I think of why we don't see that as much is because people are so worried about getting hurt. So, like, in the All-Star game, you don't see guys hustling like that because their contracts yeah. are so big. So, it's like they don't want their teams. I want them getting hurt. But I think it was really cool. And, obviously, we talked about this pre-show. But Caitlin Clark coming next year and, like, adding to that. I think the three-point contest is an evolution of like the shooting stars competition where they used to have a legend, a WNBA player, and an NBA player. I think this is a much more competitive and cool way to really test amongst them. And again, I think this is just the beginning. And hopefully they figure out ways to integrate WNBA stars more into other aspects of All-Star Weekend too because this was a great example of what they can really do and the power of that. So, Yeah, and, and, and like AB, I didn't understand you mentioned how the announcer – like Kenny – Kenny Smith was getting a lot of crap for his commentary, yeah. especially right, during so. UNESCO versus Curry. Yeah, because he was talking about how she should have shot from the women's line. Well, first of all, no, she shouldn't have. Like, why doesn't she just shoot layups? No, it's a contest against each other. They should be shooting from the same spot. And here's the reality of it. Her score of 26 matched the second highest score in the actual three-point. It matched Damian Lillard's winning score in the three-point shootout. So, no, I think she did a pretty fine job going up against the best shooter ever. Yeah, she definitely did. And, dude, to James's idea of, like, bringing back a legend, like, I'd love to see, like, Larry Bird out there now still oh talking God. funky to everybody, like, just drilling threes. That'd be with fun. the, with yeah, the, like, the warm-up jacket dude, on, he's still shooting yeah, it with like, the warm-up jacket. Dude, with the warm-up jacket and a Michelob, and he's just firing threes on your ass, right? Like, it would be awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, Sabrina did great, man. And, like, dude, James, like you said, man, like, Caitlin Clark coming in next year. <laughs> dude, that girl, she's not afraid to shoot either. Like, it, it's a cool idea. I like it. I like it. Yeah, and again, I think the – if anything, I think Sabrina validated herself in spite of Kenny's comments, which it almost makes it more empowering that she's able to do that because he was so asinine with what he was saying the whole time. It almost was like, dude, you're so tone deaf. You don't even realize what you're watching in front of you. So, if anything, it just made him sound bad, and I think Sabrina was just so – exciting and so awesome i really do think this yeah. is going to set the stage for the future i mean it's something i wish other sports could kind of follow obviously it's a little bit different given again there's not always a comparable you know to the WNBA. but i thought it was really really good for bringing this game you know to a whole new generation of people and, and a whole new audience so speaking of all-star saturday night even though our man coach he's out there working the golf he can't get away from driving the line 
He's constantly thinking about driving the line. He wants to participate. He's got major FOMO. So let's hear from the coach and get some thoughts from All-Star Saturday night. Now, this is the one thing I actually did like on All-Star Saturday night. Sabrina Ionescu, who challenged Steph Curry to a three-point contest. Now, if Kenny Smith could just shut up and not say anything, oh, she's got to shoot, stop it. It was a great, great thing in the middle of a, it's a crappy night. And what they're talking about doing next year, I think would be amazing. You bring Caitlin Clark in, you got Ionescu, and then you get Steph Curry to pick his partner, and now you got a two-on-two. -two. That, to me, feels good. There was a lot of money raised for charity, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. But they performed. They went out there and they did what they do to the best of their abilities. That's what all-star stuff is supposed to be. So the only thing I liked was that. And if there's only one thing we like out of All-Star Weekend, is it really a great weekend? Boys, have a great rest of your show. All right, so Coach was a little bit hard on All-Star Weekend, but he loved UNESCO versus Steph Curry. But there you go. If you guys noticed, like AB, if you noticed in the post-press conference, Steph Curry, he had a championship belt with him. So there's actually a championship for this competition. I think this needs to be a yearly thing. Now, it looks like they're setting up because it's in the Bay Area next year for it to be Curry versus UNESCO part two. If they want to do that, fine. But I think this should be this could be something they do every year where somebody comes out and essentially challenges Steph Curry for that title. Like, you don't think it'd be cool if next year, Ray Allen, hey, I'm here, Steph Curry. <clears throat> it's I'm going to take, I'm Ray Allen. You know who I am. I'm going to take that belt for you. This could be something they could do every year. Dude, it is. All right. And first off, I love, dude, I love the Ray Allen reference because Ray, you know, he'd come out firing. Hey, and nobody wants a piece of you Dottis down there in the paint. Nobody wants UD right there. Uh, I'll say this. I, I'll, I'll make this bet. You can put it on the recap for next year. I bet what they do is they'll do it just like the match. It'll be Steph, Sabrina versus Caitlin and pick another NBA star, right? Dame, whoever, right? The, I, I bet that they do something like that, which would be cool. Like, I say that as, that's badass. Like, dude, light it up. I think any, like, I like anybody who tries something different. If it doesn't work, fine. That's all right. You tried. Like, three-pointers generally is always going to work if you get people who can hit them. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be fun, man. I think it'd be fun. They should really do something where they get maybe the top three uh, three point scores per game or something in each league. And then they actually do it like that, where it's truly based on the, the stats and it can be super competitive like that. But I, the one thing I will say about the NBA and especially All Star Weekend, they're the most tech forward league. They always are trying the most creative things. If yeah. they can pair that with competition, and again, the game being separate from the other events, but they have everything they need to, and they have such a great product of as far as, again, the personalities and all of that. But if they can really make this, like, people are fighting for their stats to get a chance to compete in this, I think that would be so much fun to watch. And there's a whole narrative around that for the entire season. So I think they're going to start thinking a little bit more like that because then that WNBA, NBA competition just becomes that much more fun. And to go off your idea, too, about bringing, like, a Ray Allen type, I want to see Peja Stojakovic. I want to see Peja just come out here Peja. and then his son coming in the league in a few years. Like that's the cool stuff we can start yeah. to see. So it, it, let me say one thing to jump in to add to that. Like, I, I think another thing important to remember, and it, it's very similar to, you know, the WWE over the last 10 years that in the NFL as well, that remember a lot of these things are geared towards the kids teenager market. Yeah. Right. Like the couple of years ago when the NFL was starting to go to like gradient, jersey colorings right people our age are like what the hell is going on like why are the falcons looking like you know a canva layout here right but it's <laughs> 13 year olds love them right yeah. like that's the deal right so it's always important to remember like some there might be some things that like we sit and think and we're like eh, i don't know i don't know but if you have kids take a look at them if they're all yeah. in on it that is what you're gonna see Moving Did you forward. see the the new, new thing they announced with Wemby and Adam Silver, like the AI turning to the movies? NBAI, right? <laughs> so my first thought, I was like, this is ridiculous. It looks like PlayStation 2 graphics. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, if I was 12 years old, I would have thought that was cool as hell. 
You know, so I think it is like that perspective is important because they're not trying to get us. They're not trying to get us as fans anymore. They're trying to get the kids that have been so in the mix of Minecraft, Fortnite, all these other things that have taken away from their traditional sports fandom. So, again, I think that's more ways they can integrate is trying to get that audience with tech with these cool new features. So we'll see. Yep. Uh, so then, of course, we had the All-Star game last night. Now, if you had under 396, you were a loser. All right. There was a lot of points scored last night. Now, speaking of coach, like I said, he can't stay away from the crew. He can't stay away from driving the line. Let's get some thoughts from the coach on the All-Star game. Hey guys, good morning. Hopefully everything's going well there without me in the driver's seat. But Z-Man, I know you're doing a great job. AB, good morning to you as well. Now, my reaction to the All-Star game is probably a lot like everybody else's. It's an absolute joke. I mean, I understand the NFL Pro Bowl, they're playing flag football now, but at least they acknowledged that nobody wants to hit each other, nobody wants to tackle. The NBA, they are not even attempting to play defense. And I ask you this, in the summertime, we've all seen the videos of the pickup games at UCLA and all these great gyms around the country, and they're playing hard. And you're telling me that summertime is more important than an all-star game when people are playing hard-earned money to come and watch you, the best players in the world, and you're just giving a stage to Charles Barkley and Kenny and all of them just to make fun of you? Because that's exactly what it is. That's what it's turned into. It's an absolute joke. Now, the rest of the weekend is okay, I guess. And I love the fact that a no-name guy once a year gets to win the dunk contest. But come on, this guy doesn't even play in the NBA. He comes up for like one game a year just to say he's an NBA player. He's not. He's a great dunker. And... At least they acknowledged that when they found that there weren't enough players that wanted to do the dunk contest again. It makes me crave, crave 1985 again with Jordan and Neek and all those guys back then. But right now, I am not a fan of the All-Star game, and I'm not a fan of the All-Star weekend. Not at all. Thank you, Coach. So, A.B., predictably, the All-Star game last night, was not good. It was constant just running up and down the floor. I understand it's going to be a pickup game, but I don't think there was a moment in the game last night where all 10 players were on the television screen at the same time. Meaning you got guys who are cherry picking, who are not getting back on defense. But here's the interesting thing, AB. I'm watching that game last night and it's doing nothing for me. And I think it's embarrassing and I don't like it. But... My 12-year-old son is watching sitting next to me, and he loved it. Yep. He loved it. He loved the idea that they're trying to score 200 points. He loved Damian Lillard trying to get MVP, and that's speaking to exactly what you know we were just saying, where if the kids are liking it, if the next generation is into it, maybe we should kind of pay a little bit of attention to that. Oh, uh, You should absolutely be paying attention to what that – age group likes because that's what you're going to get a hundred percent everybody asks the same thing about the nfl of you know hey it went to you know a flag football game well guess what flag football at that age is massive Ma i'm here in nashville tennessee right and i mean you know there are football leagues i mean we're down here right in the middle of sec country you know to tackle football is huge flag football is just as big man like and these kids they watch it and they love it. And the Pro Bowl does massive numbers every year. I, I don't like it. Like, I don't watch it at all. You know what I mean? But kids do, man. So watch them. Pay attention. Like, the things that they like, you are going to get more of that. I guarantee it. James, and how about the – say Also, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. I also acknowledge that, like, if we were commissioners, what the hell do you do? Like, I get players that are like, I'm not getting hurt in an all-star game. You know what I mean? Like, play, like. I get it. I'm not saying it's right. I get it. There's just too much money on the table. James, how about the crowd there in Indianapolis who desperately wanted Tyrese Halliburton to be named MVP? Boo and Damian Lillard when he got was, that was Damian Lillard's a good guy. He didn't do anything wrong. That was a rough scene. There was a lot of boos the entire weekend, which again is not a good look for the NBA. But to your point, like it really is meant for that social media generation. So it was meant for again, like the 10 to 16 year olds that are on TikTok. 
that they're going to see some of those highlights from. They're going to see like the Luka and the uh, the Jokic like you know tap passes back and forth. They're going to see again like the the people shooting from half court. Like that's you know for better or for worse, that's kind of what works right now. Um, I think the sad thing is that that kind of mentality of just scoring that many points and kind of like the high flying nature and the in the three pointers, that's kind of what the league is trending to anyway. So I think it's kind of almost like a reflection of the way the league's trending. I think the same thing, if you want to look at the NFL and flag football, it's just not the same hard hitting league it is. So it's almost the narrative around the league is kind of being reflected in these all-star games and the pro bowl, whatever you want to call them. But, you know, I do think there needs to be some sort of semblance of competition or otherwise they just become total like spectacles, like and the spectacle in a bad way, almost like it's not the sport. It's just a show. And, and I didn't mean to interrupt you like, but, you also have the NBA that, you know, just put in like this new in season tournament challenge as well. Right. So it's like, if you're a player, it's like, oh, 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 I get it, man. But like, it's already a long season by itself. And now like you're adding in all these things and not that the players don't necessarily completely not care, but I don't, I, I don't know how you incentivize it because they make so much money already. You know, I I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have the right answer. You know, I, I mean? think the NHL honestly has done the best job of just changing things like the three on three tournament. It's exciting. It's quick. It's it's again meant for short spurts of, of watching and great for betting too. Mm-hmm. again. NBA is a little bit different because if you start doing I mean, I saw people saying one V one or if you do three V three, that would be entertaining and exciting. But again, if guys aren't going hard, then it's still going to be the same issue. So you know, it's yeah. it's just I think they're going to keep trying until it works for a year and then they'll use it for a year or two and then they'll change the rules again when it gets stale. So um, but I just Major think League they- baseball, Major League Baseball has the best opportunity, like yeah. because you could you could line up and play baseball. I think the only thing that makes it like difficult. And again, I don't have the answer for it, is that when you're bringing in a stud ace every inning, it's like, OK, every game is three to two, of course, because it's like, dude. You can't just bring in like Kershaw and then like you're just lining them up. Like, of course, nobody's getting hits. Like these dudes are just mowing them down. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but when baseball, Zach, yeah baseball's yeah. probably the best. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. When Zach Wheeler's your your seventh inning guy yeah. and you just throw him in there after like another superstar, you're like, okay, uh, this is, yeah. again, which is cool because then as the, the hitters are facing that every single inning and then the pitchers are also facing, it's kind of like the World Baseball Classic. You feel like you're just seeing the best of the best playing each other, which again, with baseball, especially when you have the West Coast games and you don't get I don't I, I love Mike Trout. I don't get to watch him play, you know, so it's like the all star game is for that opportunity for for baseball more so than the other sports. But James, excellent debut here, helping us start the week on driving the line. Before we let you go, tell everybody again, bet rhythm, juice reel everywhere that folks can catch you. Go ahead. Yeah, I saw a few comments and I couldn't respond. So I'm going to respond to them real quick. Uh, it's actually my college jersey, not Roy Halliday, but I love Roy Halliday as well. Uh, rest in peace. Um, I'd recommend core for using rhythm core is really a place for anybody that's betting to go and try to understand how to use models and data in a really easy to use way. So I recommend most people starting there. There's a free seven day trial. And then if you're somebody that's already made betting models before you can download premium and you can really get, you know, making custom models that are very, very, uh, again, customizable that usually you'd have to do in Excel spreadsheets or pay for data. So, um, it's a really cool tool. So that's called rhythm. Juice Reel is another tool. It's, it has a bunch of different bet tracking and, and analytics. You can see all of your betting history by team, sports book. You can get bets from the best players, uh, best bettors on the app. Again, great tool. Both are free to download. Um, definitely recommend it. You can find me at James Santor on Twitter. I'm always talking about sports and betting and you know, really enjoyed coming on the show and talking with you guys. Awesome. Great job, James. I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. Thanks for stopping by, man. Cool. Have a good day, boys. See you, bud. All right. So, A.B., again, let's tell everyone here what we got going on tonight with Shoot Your Shot. Very important for the crew because they can learn how they can participate as well. Absolutely, man. Uh, Shoot Your Shot tonight for the crew premium members. And what it is is where Coach and myself, we're in the audience, and we create your own show, produce it for you. You've got full recaps, everything, and you come on and show yourself of what you've got, your game of being a better. We're also going to plug you your excuse me social media following if you have you know a youtube brand or a website anything like that you'll see it on the front page there so we want to make sure that not only you have your own show we give you the platform we'll boost out your platform and make it absolutely worth your while so if you want to check that out you can click the join button below or find the link in the show description 
There you go. AB, you said it all. We've said it all. Let's see what the crew chose for today. It's time to get to the closing bell. Come on. Of course, we want to remind everybody, you got to make sure you got your notifications on. You like, you rate, you comment, you do all that good stuff. YouTube.com slash at drive in the line, at drive in the line on Twitter. You want to make sure you get all the updates, short videos, long videos, you have all kinds of videos. If I tell you all of them, we'll be here all day. AB, let's get to the crew play of the day. What are we thinking? Absolutely, man. So the crew has chosen Iowa State. They are rolling with the Cyclones. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, they are going Iowa State plus nine and a half here. So that is the crew's choice. Also, real quick, I know that we have a lot of new viewers in here. If we could throw up the recap screen one more time, make sure that they can see that as well. The crew is going Iowa State, rolling with it tonight against Houston, which is going to be a really fun game. And yeah, not that, you know, Zaz, you don't have to read through that at all. I just want to make sure everybody can see that. Grab your screenshots of yeah. it right there. You also see it, you know, on the ticker below before that was put up. So yeah, yeah. I think we got everybody to take care of, man. All right, so they, everyone's got their march orders, right? That's how we do it on Driving the Line. Looking for another winning night. The coach, of course, is back tomorrow. AB, you want to bid adieu to the crew and tell everybody that we'll see them later? Absolutely, man. Got some great picks tonight. You know that we'll be live tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, as normal. Breaking it down. Zaz, buddy. Fantastic job, man. You did great. Thanks, man. Thanks for allowing me in the driver's seat today. And of course, uh, of course, our, our pal, the coach, he will be back in the driver's seat tomorrow. Love all you guys who comment and hang out with us throughout the show. Looking forward to all of that throughout the day as well on all the social medias and seeing you guys again bright and early. Not too early. 10 a.m. You got to be awake by then. What are we talking about? Get out of bed. Bright and early tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for another edition of Driving the Line. See ya.